Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's the day after the uh, Arkansas, South Arkansas mini event that was Saturday, January 12th. So it's it's Sunday, January 13th, and I'm out here this morning. It's a little chilly. I'm drinking some coffee. Yes, some of my home roasted coffee, and it's it's quite good. Um, wanted to do a quick video and just say thanks to everybody that came out. Thanks to everybody that donated door prizes. Thanks to everybody that put a little money in the donation jug to help me recover some of the costs for renting the facility and buying some of the other door prizes. And a special thanks to my wife, Lady Lois, for coming out and working the, the front door, the sign-in sheet and all that. And uh, Mark Monty and Jamie Sanders for getting up and doing presentations. We had uh, 27 people show up. Uh, Steve and Kim over at Prepping in Progress and Adam Watson both have already done videos after action report videos and they've talked about how eclectic the group was, how knowledgeable some of the people were, so I'm not going to go into that. But I will say there were a couple of people that came all the way down almost to El Dorado uh, from southern Missouri and had to spend the night in a hotel room in Little Rock in order to make it down there in the morning. So if they can do it, you can get out there and meet folks. So get out there and meet folks. That's what it's all about. Um, I did have several requests to record the, the solar presentation, and I tried to do that, but my phone messed up and it quit like five minutes in. I do have a little bit of that, of Mark Monty speaking about his solar, and I'll include that at the end of this video along with a couple of other videos, quick little videos that I took kind of showing you what the room looked like and all the people mingling in between the presentations and, and at lunch and whatnot. So anyway, if you missed it, you missed a really good time. It was great to see uh, people that I had met before and, and enjoy their company, and it was also very good to meet a lot of new people. It, it was good. There were a lot of new faces down there, made some new friendships. It's uh, awesome, awesome when we do stuff like that. So uh, I love it. We're going to keep doing that. And uh, anyway... Check out the stuff at the end of the video and see what you missed. All right. Y'all take care. I'll catch you next time. Shalom, everybody. <laughs> South Arkansas mini event. Morro Bay State Park. If you're not here, you're square. We're having a good time. Uh, I, I have kind of a technical background in a way. I'm not an expert in any area, but I've been a ham ray operator off and on since I was in seventh grade. Uh, um, I wired my <coughs> um, I've worked as a first class radio telephone licensed engineer for radio stations. So I, I had a pretty good basic understanding of how it worked. Solar was crazy expensive at that point, and I thought, you know, what's the one thing I need to do to keep my refrigerator running? And back then, when I ran the numbers, it was going to be close to $10,000. So I said, well, that's off the day. But then, I don't know if you've noticed, solar panels have got less and less and less expensive. And Gordon bought this 100-watt panel, which is probably identical to the one I have at home, for $94. $94, Walmart.com, free shipping. So that's 100 watts, and that's less than a dollar a watt. Um, so I saw, the, I saw the prices dropping, and um, so the first thing that I did was I wired my house DC. So I have a dual electrical system in my house. I have a regular grid power, and then I've got basically wired like an RV, the best way to describe it. And then uh, I put in a, a deep cycle battery. It was about, it, it was a really it's a surprisingly good battery from Walmart, but it's uh, it's a 114 amp hour battery, which means I can run one light for 23 days with no sunshine whatsoever for 23 days. So, I mean, it, it's got some capacity. Um, and then I put it on a trickle charger to keep, keep it charged up. So we were running our TV and our lights and everything, but not all solar panels, it was off a trickle charger, really. And eventually the price of the solar panel got down to the point that I could just play and get one, and I did. And it was $150 at the end. That's $50 cheaper. So, um, and I put that thing up there, and we've been heavily using that system since uh, summer before last, I guess. So, I'll tell you what it's like to live on 100 watts. You do not run your refrigerator. 
you don't run your deep freeze, your air conditioner, you don't run your hot water heater on it, stoves doesn't go on it, you don't plug in electric space heaters, you don't run big televisions. Well, what I can run, I can keep all the lights on in my house. This cell phone has never been charged on anything but solar power. Uh, my ham radios, 100% solar. I have several. They've, they've never run on anything but solar power. Um, well, or at least some of them are older. They've been on grid power until the solar came along, but they've not been charged on grid ever since. I can charge my laptop. I can run my Wi-Fi and modem off of it. And I have a small 19-inch TV that uh, pulls about 20 watts, and I can I can watch television through an antenna. 20 channels that little. So, and my Bose home stereo even runs on 12 volts. So I kept it DC for simple, and I don't want to get technical at this point, but I just want to say I kept it really, really, really simple. I maybe have $500 in the whole thing, between wiring and switches and fixtures and um, just connectors and the solar panel and the battery. 500 bucks. So what that means is when the power goes off, for whatever reason, a thunderstorm goes through, somebody hits a power pole or you know, the next bin lot takes out Arkansas nuclear one. Whatever causes the power to go out. But my lights are still on, the TV's still playing, I'm still making cell phones <laughs> working. I'm getting on here to call Jordan and say, how you doing? Um, can you pass a message to my son in North Little Rock, please? Mm -hmm. So I, I can still do those things with no interruption. I mean, it's already operating. Bruce told me he has some of this kind of stuff already. I encourage you to get started. If you have your solar panels, if you have your batteries, go on and put them in the, in the place and start using them. Because Gordon likes to say this, and it's the most true thing he ever says. If you don't practice it, it doesn't work. So if you, I'm practicing every day with this because when I got up this morning, the lights were solar powered. My alarm clock went off with solar power. Uh, I sent Gordon text messages and talked to him on the phone on a solar powered cell phone. Um, so these are all things you can do relatively inexpensive. And what's really cool is you can start it. Your central thing you need the most is the battery, a battery. So because everything comes off of the battery, and Gordon's going to go into that. It's really a battery system, not a solar system. Right. So, solar system is what you happen to use to charge it. You can use other things to charge it too. Generators, turtle chargers, other things. But get started with a minimal system. It's scalable. You can add on to it, add on to it, add on to it. As you figure things, if some things are important and not important, do it. So, the purpose of this speech, this talk, is uh, to encourage you. How many people have any solar at all? Okay. You got some. How many have a solar that they're using daily? Okay. I want you to I want you to get the rest of you. I want you to deeply think about this. Because you gotta know how it works. You gotta understand uh, what its limitations are. Uh, I mean, the funny thing is a solar person when you're living on a minimal system like this, I mean I still use a grid, oh my god, we have a refrigerator and big TVs and air conditioning and all. But um, but you, the person that's living in a minimal system like this, um, you listen to the weather forecast a lot. How many cloudy days are ahead? Because my deep cycle battery is 114 amp hours, and what that translates into with normal use, me and my wife, we can get by about four days before the voltage starts to drop to the point that it's starting to impact my battery's life. So I keep a trickle charger there. I have plugged it in twice since we've installed the system because the battery built the jet to the point I wasn't comfortable with. I could have kept going, but I don't want that battery to last a long time. I checked the other day, the battery's close to seven years old and it's still full voltage. So um, it's doing what it's supposed to do. I'm really surprised at the Walmart battery, but it's doing great. So 